Yeah. Come and get your BJ with Brandon and Jason. Brandon's sick as crap. He's got non constipation. <laughs> Exploding out of both holes. Yeah. Here we are. Yeah. Well, hello, guys. Welcome to episode five, four, five, five. Five. Oh, my Here gosh. We're going to be in double digits soon. We're um, kind of basically the competitor to Ben Shapiro at this point. Yeah. We're not far from Joe Rogan. Almost. We got a Jamie. We got five episodes. You got a lot of clothes on. Yeah, we have a huge production studio. You got a lot of clothes on. I'm sick. Okay, Brandon's not feeling well. And if you didn't believe us, um, if uh, if you're listening on Spotify, make sure you just go to YouTube and check out how much clothes Brandon's wearing. But he also is wearing, can you show up to the camera? Boom, official merch. Your morning BJ merch. Yeah. <laughs> That's our new sponsor. We've given up on Filthy Derek Smith. Yeah, I'm gonna get those. <laughs> I forget fuck these guys. <laughs> yeah, no, I've been. Uh, I know my wife was a little sick over the weekend, and then I was fine. And then wake up Monday morning, uh, super achy, and then uh, took an ibuprofen 800 this morning. Was able to work all day. Um, felt fine. As soon as that wore off, the achiness intensified. So I've been in bed. And then uh, Alan's been over here. Um, I don't know what he's been doing downstairs, rifling through drawers and shit. Yeah. Um, he had on Jen. Uh, you can't see my, but he's wearing Jenny's bra and panties right he now. He was wearing her high heels earlier. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He took those off. <laughs> I bet they're bigger than yours. They are. Yeah. No. And then, uh, yeah, I've been in bed. And then um, I was going to probably sit this one out. But uh, Jason got here. And then all of a sudden, like, he was like inside me. And I had motivation from you. I, I well, here's the thing: Brandon thinks he has Omnicrom. I think he's coming off his massive test cycle, and uh, he just feels like a regular dude right now. That <laughs> That's all it is. He feels like a regular bitch. This natty life is for the fucking birds. Yeah, it's bullshit. Uh, I think here's how I know that your test is low because your dog is humping my leg, not yours. That's true. So usually it's me humping your leg. But oh, it might like, be you. Oh, it is you it's humping just my like leg. A little, like I'll leave a little yogurt squirt behind. Yeah, like, no, uh, but that's know, like, how the yogurts. Which one? The ice cream go- or like the snack yogurt. It was like yogurt in a go pack and like you would rip the top and then. Oh, yeah. I remember that. It's like that last little bit that you have to like kind of squeeze and get it out. And that's why I shoot on your leg. <laughs> <laughs> I like it when you're sick. Too. Well, we have a huge guest today. We have uh, Todd Hutchings. Toddzilla. Tom, Tom Hutchinson. Tom Hutchinson is <laughs> Tom Hutchinson is Brandon calls him because he's bad with names. But we have Todd, Toddzilla, Todd Hutchins is joining us relatively shortly. I'm gonna wait for Jamie to send me the link and I'm gonna email uh Todd and we're gonna get him on the phone. Um but uh yeah. Yeah, so that's been our week. Uh I hosted practice here on Saturday night, which is probably where I'm sorry, Friday night. It's probably New where years. um a few people kind of got a little sick. Um, but uh we had a great night of polling. Uh you can go back and watch the video previous to this one. And uh, see, it's like a half hour of your arm destruction. My right arm is still smashed. Cocaine's a hell of a drug. Sure is. <laughs> and I'm glad I don't do it, which is well, why at the I'm moment st- nothing hurts. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm actually I don't snort cocaine. I actually am then starting to do snort kratom. I found. I don't that, even um, like cocaine. It's just like the way it smells. Yeah, same, same. It's my same with my wife. Right. If you like put it on a straw and smell it really. Yeah, I don't. Like I don't really like her. I just like how she smells. <laughs> that's what i meant by that yeah. <laughs> yeah so are we doing the sponsors or what yep. yeah okay brandon told me he's like before we started he's like jason you may have to uh carry um, the show carry the show because he's like half dying and i'm happy to do that for you yeah go ahead and uh tell him who our wonderful sponsors are our wonderful sponsors are Filthy Power Industries, where you can get filthy and powerful and so filthy you get powerful. Get your Filthy Power merchandise and get filthy, powerful, filthy power, super filthy power. Can anyone use it? Anyone can use filthy power. It's I don't know your your speech offhand. I'm <laughs> now I just know you Where say you, get it? you say filthy power and head over to filthypower.com. <laughs> what, what, filthy power industry. And just filthypowerindustries.com and use your code your morning BJ15 to save 15%. Yeah. Of all merchandise, getting yourself extra filthy and extra powerful. And if you're um order now, I will cough on it before I send it out to you. Yeah, you'll be you'll get uh some a uh, little bit of testosterone and a whole lot of Omicron. So on inside you. Yeah. But that's a good thing. You get natural immunity, herd immunity. That's what we're trying to do. This is the second time. That you got sick yeah. in your whole life. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> that's not bad. That's yeah. that's good odds. Yeah. And the, the first time wasn't I mean, a little worse than this time. It yeah. was like a day and a half of kind of really hurting. Yeah, you're but back. Fine. Yeah. And then uh, this time, just 
seems like it's going to be a full day tomorrow yeah. should be good and i'm trying I'm, I'm trying to get sick i'm literally like when brandon told me he wasn't feeling good i licked his forehead because i'm trying to get sick because i feel like if i can get sick i cannot i can rest and heal my right arm my arms are healing i didn't work out today oh, you're so lucky i was alan came out and we we're going to do a video and then when he was like you know an hour out uh -huh. so he was too late for him to turn around that's when i tell him that i can't do it yeah as you would right, right just like you told me five as i was pulling up well, you're yeah, like hey man i'm I doing this hurt your feelings. <laughs> you're, brandon texted me five minutes ago going hey man just so you know I'm, I'm gonna stay in bed and i'm like dude i'm outside your house <laughs> like, yeah it's all right come in anyway our other sponsor got high heels for everyone <laughs> <laughs> okay well that's okay um our other sponsor is our good friends the good pullas uh you can follow them at good pullas um on instagram and uh, uh use your code your morning bj15 and save 15 percent of your entire order good pullas because um I need the cash. Yeah. Thank you. What do you say? Um, I say let's bring on Tom Hutchinson. Let's get on Tom Hutchinson. And um, um, yeah, as soon as uh, we're 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 gorillaing in here. I'm waiting for Jamie. Jamie, I'm waiting for our Jamie for to send me the link now for like 20 minutes. And uh, he said he just he has some special timing, the Cox Crow or something like that. Don't worry, three guys, times. I'll beat him later. Okay, that's good. Just get him sick. Yeah. <laughs> You don't get sick. You don't get sick. No, well, I don't get sick. Penal. He's going to get it through his penis. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, well, that's the thing. If you're watching, uh, Brandon doesn't beat me. Well, not as much as uh, the bruising on my arm isn't for Brandon. The bruising on my ass is. Well, the ones on your neck are for me. The ones that, yeah, I have a really, I'm doing, uh, I bought my, my wife uh, was nice enough. This is what my wife bought me for Christmas. She let us share him and we both sucked on his neck. That is true. But my wife bought me for Christmas. Um, this is how you know uh, um, I have a good wife and the life of an arm wrestler. I um, She bought me from Amazon. It's It was, uh, I got a scraping kit, a TENS unit, and a sucking, not a sucking, a, a cupping, sorry, suck, sucking, oh. a cupping set. Yeah, she bought me a sucking machine. It's the greatest thing she ever did. That is, okay, good. Well, I didn't get one of those. Um, hold on, I gotta, I gotta you do, can actually use take it on this as well, but it'll kind of pull your pink sock out. I gotta copy oh, this. Oh, okay, well, let's get him on. Yeah, no, I uh, I just sent, uh, and boom, he's just got it. So we know he's there. And uh, we're going to have Todd Zilla, Todd Hutchings, or as Brandon Allen calls him, Tom Hutchinson. I just said it quickly. Tom <laughs> Hutchinson sounds like a better name. I feel like I could beat that dude in arm wrestling. You can definitely be. I don't know if you can beat Todd Hutchings, but Tom Hutchinson. You've, uh, nothing, I didn't say anything about Todd Hutchings. <laughs> yeah, but you'll make Todd, Tom the, Hutchinson the Tom your guy, bitch. I will murder that. You guy. will make him your bitch. And we got him. We got Tom Hutch Tom Hutchinson. All right, he'll that's with Brandon. Now. We got Todd Toddzilla. And if you notice, I'm wearing I'm wearing the shirt. That's how. Uh, <laughs> oh. I'm wearing the shirt and the. If, I don't want to stand up right now because I'm hitting my head on the ceiling fan, but I'm also wearing the Toddzilla underwear. Phil left out. <laughs> really? I didn't know that he had a shirt. I would love to wear one. You, I brought a pair of underwear for you, an extra oh, yeah. pair. Underwear? Yeah, hundred percent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, got hundred percent. Uh, we got uh, there. We go. And uh, oh, we got a. Uh, a Whoa. buffalo in the background because he's if, if people don't know todd uh todd has a big match uh this weekend this saturday against the buffalo as, oh, right buff the buff buffalo long i what don't do you, even have buffalo in australia what do you what do you call sorry what do you call lachlan adair buffalo n buffalo n okay so that's um if you look phonetically at his instagram name it makes a lot of sense <laughs> so yeah yeah at first i was like buff elon yeah, no, it's. I think Todd's right. It's Buffalo in. No, I agree. Yeah, I think that's that makes more sense because there's buffaloes. Buffaloes are strong uh, animals that use all of their. Uh, yeah. The Indians used to use them. I don't know. Let's let our guest talk. Yeah. Anyway, Todd, uh, just wrote, thank you for coming on. Um, give you a heads up. Uh, the reason Brandon Allen has so many clothes on is he thinks he has Omicron or his body's being a pussy from coming off of his massive test cycle, and he thinks he just feels like a regular person. One of the two. It's and one. Flannel cures COVID. Yes, hundred yep. percent. Yep. Okay. Well, it, it covers up this low testosterone levels. That's for sure. <laughs> so, and uh, it's either because I'm sick or because I just came off a good cycle. For, you know, I was beating Larry Wheels. I had to run a little heavy, guys. Yeah, yeah. He got flannel on now. So, um, but speaking of beating up people, <laughs> Todd Hutchins, um, you have a huge match with Lachlan Adair. I know you've, uh, you guys both have been on lots of shows. Um. We're born taught already. We're, we know it's past your bedtime. I'm, we don't want to take too much of your time. We know it's like 10 p.m. Right. We know it's 10 p.m. in Ohio, and uh, we know we need to get your uh, your rest. And uh, have you 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 sound your your voice has been sounding extra um, bassy. Yeah, I was I was sick last weekend. I don't know what I had. I, my voice like disappeared for a few hours uh, Sunday morning. <laughs> so. 
Hopefully it's not low T. Yeah, no. <laughs> if we if not, we're gonna send you some flannel. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll get you. We'll it's, get if you it's all. low T, I'm betting on uh, that more flannel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if it's low T, we're hundred percent. We're we're both uh, going on state kings and putting our money on uh, on Lachlan <laughs> on the on the Buffalo. Um. So Todd, like, uh, I, you know, I, I'm, I was watching a lot. I've been watching um uh you uh the other shows that uh that you've been on to try to not just ba- you know get you the same um you know the same questions over and over again and um so i was trying to think of some stuff that you know from for uh you know our audience would maybe want to watch or, or listen to um or i can't talk either um questions that uh you know I, me personally um we know you started like the give people so who who don't know who taught is we you, you started arm wrestling at 38 years old is that correct 35. 35. Okay. And you were going to an archery tournament uh, and by mistake, you finally arm wrestling. Next thing you know, you're the greatest arm wrestler under 250 pounds in the world. That's your whole story. Correctly. (laughs) I used to be under 250. Yeah. When you were six. Middle school. (laughs) I was going to say when you were six. (laughs) But Todd, uh, what, what, so what I wanted to ask you is this, Um, coming into this match, um, you had your last training session today. Is that correct? uh yes and and so between now and then um you know and, and i and I like I, to be totally respectful um you know i'm a fan of yours i'm a fan of lachlan's um uh even though he is australian and because i can't hold that against him um but um you know i'm a fan of both you guys and uh, it, this match is really exciting for me um for you if you look at the data of like these you know people asking um you know, when they do the polls, who's going to win? You know, it's kind of right now, it seems about 70, 30, 60, 40 people in the community are, uh, again, correct me if I'm saying anything incorrect. Um, it's like, it looks like about 70% of the community is favoring you. Is that hard to do a match like that when you're supposed to win? No, because I'm favored because the match is in America and more people, everybody being polled knows me. Right. I mean, those polls are more popularity contests than anything else. I mean, there's nobody doing an analysis. I mean, there's no odds makers or anything in arm wrestling. Yeah. Well, Devin. You know, like there would be if it was <laughs> fantasy football or something. Right, right, right. Um, and uh, did you get to watch uh, Brandon's match with uh, Larry? Did you watch that? Uh, yeah, I saw, I saw part of it. I, I paid for the live review or the pay-per-view, and then it died on me. So I, I had to watch. Uh, I, was, I was able to watch. I was actually driving home from Indiana, and I was watching it while I was driving. Oh, really? So obviously, but you got to see Devin and John. I got to see. No, I didn't. I saw one match. I oh, saw really? the first match live. Okay. And then when I was driving home, I, I was able to watch them all on tape. Yeah. And so watching back, um, uh, did you um, how did how did those matches go according to what you thought? Were they did they go how you thought? Did they go differently what you thought? It looked like Devin was just flat ass stronger than John, but it looks like John. It was weird because watching John pull the little guys with his hand back going sideways. I was wondering about John's hand, but John's hand looked solid against Devin. Mm-hmm. You know, Devin just looked stronger. Yeah. You know, and it's, you probably can't take six years off and go after, you know, one of the top four or five dudes in the world. Yeah. <laughs> it's now, a big jump from Chant Shaw to Devin Lorette. Yeah. You know? I think that too. It probably takes more than two or three months. <laughs> And um, now you have Lachlan, um, and obviously, like uh, unlike other people that they have to have to have their match kind of win or lose, um, you already have your next match against, um, uh, how do you say his last name? He's a Bulgarian guy, right? Yep. And, and I don't want to pronounce, how do you pronounce his name? It's T-S-O-N. <laughs> it's <laughs> right. Buffalon. People pronounce it. I'm Buffalon. <laughs> And I'm not sure what's correct. Okay, because the the thing is, uh, because I know that I I know that guy who you're pulling against, and that's and that dude is scary looking, and he he's another guy. He he's a hook puller, is right right. Uh, yes, he is. Okay, because um, because I know like those guys, him, Bothazar, and I saw you pull against him, and that guy's like what like 150 pounds, and and those guys are all legit. Um, is that hard too? Like knowing that you got that match. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, do you do in your pre- preparation, um, because the matches are like about a month apart or so, uh, mm-hmm. it, do you have, do you, like, do you change your, I mean, we all know what you kind of do with, with your style and uh, your opponents know what you're going to do, um, but you kind of say, screw it and you're doing your thing. Do you, like, do you change anything based on an opponent? 
Yeah, I mean, I change my training depending on what I think I have to do. But I was actually training to pull Sasho okay. in Turkey. And that's what I was actually training for. And then the Lachlan match came up after I'd started preparing for Sasho. And then after the Lachlan match got set, Sasho got injured and they switched mm -hmm. the other one. So it's just been a flurry of match changes over the last couple of months. And John is going against um, the uh, in, a person who had success against you in, in Turkey yeah. last time, Zoloff. Um, how do you see that match going for him? Like John, I like John's chances in that. Mm -hmm. Okay, very much. Yep. Um, and and you know, like, because uh, to give some background um, to the audience too, uh, I've I've been following. Uh, Todd's training. I mean, I, I've been a fan of Todd's for a long time. Um, clearly, I have a shirt, his underwear. Um, um, not his, I'm actually wearing Todd's underwear, not, not merchandise. I'm actually wearing a pair of underwear that Todd gave me and he signed it. So I, I, I have never, I haven't taken it off since I met you. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of your training and everything like that. And the, your, your mentality, I think you're one of the few Americans that makes his arm wrestling training, even though it's a lot of time there's, um, there's beer involved. Uh, you don't just go out there and you're, you're systematic with your approach to your training. And, um, and I, and I think that's awesome. The right, I'm talking as far as writing things down, knowing your numbers, all these kind of things like that. One thing I wanted to ask you just as a, you know, personal thing, kind of, uh, with your training, like, are you still getting stronger? I'm still setting PRs most of the time. Because I don't know if you saw Ray, um, uh, Ray and Giannis, they, uh, Ray, um, coach Ray, you know, they said a couple weeks ago, they said a thing and we, Brandon and I talked about it on this show where they said, once you're over 40 and you've been arm wrestling around or doing any kind of strength sport, you can't get any stronger. I've heard that there's strength limits on age, but that's usually that's um, on things like powerlifting or something like that, where you're doing full, full rep benching or squatting, but arm wrestling is a static mm -hmm. sport. You know, you're not doing a full range of motion when you're arm wrestling, you're just locking it in. I'm not so sure why you're, isometric strength can't keep going up mm -hmm. you know we're taught for years that it's in our uh, tendons and our bone structure not our muscles anyway so right. i mean i don't see those getting weaker but i, I disagree with um, like you you peak yeah there's no peak like yeah, uh, we talked about your that. tendons get stronger as you get older and then you know we're all using trt or some kind of hormone replacement therapy so <gasps> it's not like a hormone the hell you down. Say. <laughs> the hell so you it's say. um yeah i think you can just keep pushing like in powerlifting a great example like stan efforting didn't hit his world record till he was 43 years old. Right. And I think it has more to do with miles than it does to do with uh, age. You know, how many miles you have on you and have on your arm, um, you know, that can limit uh, your growth and your strength. But I think you can keep pushing as long as you're training hard and uh, doing it systematically. Uh, I know you do some kind of variation of, um, you know, Louis Simmons, Westside Barbell. Um, what are the lifts that you max out on and then you try to improve those specific lifts? It's, I took, it's, um, it's, I talked to Louis Simmons a couple of times when I was starting out and I read West, but I mean, I don't have an agreement with them or anything. So if I misrepresent West side, it's completely on me. If, if not, I get it yeah. correct, then it's on them. But, <laughs> uh, okay. But I, I, I do one rep maxes on my arm wrestling movement. So it's on my wrist wrench with a pulley machine, something like that. I don't, do a lot of the power lift. I don't max out on a lot of the power lifting moves anymore. Right. I'm just I'm just too tired all the time. Right. But I train my arms pretty hard. I have a speed day, max day, and a body day on the arms. And then I'll do uh, like like Louie advocates like this volume day where you do a, a six by six. You add weight every week until you can't do it. Then you switch the exercise. I do a lot of that for mass building. Now that I'm, you know, no longer a middleweight, but a super heavyweight. How much you weigh? What? How much do you weigh now? Oh, 220 pounds. 220. And is that like, uh, is that you, um, do you have to try to be heavier to do? I mean, do you have to force feed to be that heavy? Or does that like kind of that site where your body's at right now at, at this part of your Somewhere life? Somewhere between 215 and 220, I can maintain fairly naturally. If I have to make 198 again. I would drop down to probably somewhere between 210 and 215 to cut to 198, 195. Right. Um, getting over, getting to 240 is hard for me. 
so that's like where I'm, I'm force eating is at 240 yeah. so like in in, in in like that match with jerry you look you looked like your biggest to me was that your biggest in that match yeah the match with jerry and the match with matt mask i was mm. in the upper 230s yeah and i because i i think i saw you saying something about like eating you milkshakes and cheeseburgers uh bacon cheeseburgers yeah. to, to stay up at like it's hard for you to stay at that weight it is, but now super heavyweight weights are different because when you're a middleweight or a lightweight, you weigh in, you know, you're fully dehydrated, you're stripped down, you haven't eaten, you know. When you're a super heavyweight, you get back from the bar drinking water, you get on the scale fully clothed. Mm -hmm. you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> when they weigh a super heavyweights in, it were, I mean, I think Devin had a backpack on once when he weighed in. You know? No, do you do you uh do you want to is it because you don't want to cut weight or do you just want to be is is like in heavyweights and boxing they call you know the UFC fighter the heavyweight champ the baddest man on the planet is that just because you want to be the baddest man on the planet? No, the uh, the WAL put me in super heavyweight, and if someone would if a promoter would give me middleweight matches, I'd take them. Okay, okay, I can still make one ninety five. Right, right, and um. Like, cause that's, you know, like I said, like, cause for me, you know, I'm 45. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I started in the sport in my early twenties, got out of the sport for like 15 years and came back into it in, in uh, three years ago. And, and that's when I started like messaging, you know, like I said, I, I was, I'm being grateful that you've always been helpful with me and my wife, as far as helping us with our training and, uh, always been super gracious, you know, we, before I even met you as far as, um, you know, uh, giving me input, giving me advice, even just, you know, a uh, way to go kid. Um, and, and those things are cool, you know, um, from the, the arm wrestling, you know, royalty, but, um, and, and that's the thing, like, so for me, that's why I asked you, like, are you getting stronger? Like, I guess another version of question I want to ask you is, um, would Todd Hutchins today be Todd Hutchins from five years ago? Oh, certainly. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah, that, I'd easily beat my, 50 year old self <laughs> really or even like say again 10 years ago 45 well yeah but when i was 45 i was only in the sport 10 years <laughs> right still, so really so that, i mean that's really yeah. cool. again i th the reason why i think that's cool is because someone like brandon who and he talks about miles you know he's only 33 but he said he started powerlifting when he was like eight and uh so he said he got a lot of miles on him but you know he he's new into the sport um guys like larry wheels you know are looking at the you know these guys that are amazing that it's the, we have these these gentlemen now in our sport guys like brandon guys like larry with a bigger following that can bring more and more and more eyes the more eyes the more people the more people the more money and i think that's the goal for anybody who's doing you know something on a professional level uh, you know, I think, you know, we can have all the motivation in the world, but you know, if I said, Hey, you got to win this match, Hey, you got to win this match. I'll give you 20 grand. I think you'd be lying or anyone would be lying if they said, Oh, the 20 grand doesn't matter at all. You know? Oh, yeah. oh I'm only in it for the money. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'm only in it for the money. And I mean, where do you see, uh, I mean, you know, do you see a, a, uh, a ceiling at any point or as far as like an end game, as far as you're like, yeah, I'm going to do five more years. Or are you just going until you're, I'm just going. Well, I've already quit two or three times, right. so you know, I'm, just, I'm not I'm not quitting anymore. So. Well, that's good. And then uh, with your with your um, your opponent uh, this weekend, uh, Lachlan. Um, first of all, uh, would you do you fly to uh, to go to Virginia or do you drive? I'm driving. You're driving. Okay. It's like uh, I think it's only like six hours from here. Oh, that's easy. Yeah, that's not so anything good. under twelve. I'm driving. Yeah, even fourteen yeah. or so, like to Montana. Yeah. I'll drive. Especially with it to used me. to be seven hours was the coin toss between getting on a plane and driving. The way flying is now, yeah. right. twelve hours. We're in a you fucking diaper the whole time. You we, don't go to an airport. Dude, the trip to Dubai was horrible. Like with the mask and all that the entire time, and then back. Like, oh, dude, it was brutal. Yeah, yeah. especially with Turkey you know, was like that too. You had to wear a mask the whole time. Yeah, especially I was like Even though every hours. single person on the plane had a COVID test yep. before they got up. Yep, makes no sense. Makes no sense. Uh, um, beautiful. Uh, so the yeah, do you, planes recirculated like ten times a minute. It's, yeah. <laughs> like, it's the cleanest air on the planet. Exactly. Uh, well, hey, there's the same people that are probably sitting in their car, you know, <laughs> wearing their mask still. So I, I uh, God bless Earth. That's all I can say. Um, but uh, you know, you you have your opponent, um, Lachlan, um, and I know you like to do. Uh, uh, again, correct me if I'm, I'm speaking out of turn. Uh, you 
you like to do um, a match analysis. I think you one point I, th- I heard you say something like when you used to when you knew like WAL, you knew a super match, you know you got that guy, and you you do your training and you got the, some video of that guy all of his matches with Lachlan. Like you said, there's not so much data on him right now. Um, you know, is does that make it difficult to game plan for for something someone like him? It's hard. The unknown people are um, they're always tricky. You know, because you don't know what they're going to do. You don't actually know how strong they are. And he hasn't pulled anybody recently that I'm familiar with. So I really have no, you know, gauge of where he's at. So um, I, I'll assume he's going outside on the first match just because that's the safest way to go when you don't know anybody. And I'm going to be very defensive mm-hmm. for the first match just until we see how things, you know, until I kind of got a understanding that just how fast he is and just how strong he is right well because you know when you talk to you know someone like and it's difficult and, I, and i'm saying with all due respect because i'm wearing his t-shirt and I, and I love ryan i love ryan what he's wants to do for the sport but he, i feel like he almost um uh can make the like the people he's promoting like he turns like he does this, he, he, he wants it to be so great and almost like turns people against the people that he wants to hype up, if you you, you kind of get what I'm saying. And, you know, he, so he's a person that has, you know, some data between Touch and You, Touch and Lachlan. And, you know, and everyone who who who, who he's pulling or everyone who Lachlan's going to be pulling against because he beat Ryan. Ryan's the this 44% stronger than everyone else on Earth. Lachlan beat him. It's a fact that Lachlan's the strongest person on Earth. And, um, you know, and, and I think, you know, even Ryan, though, did say if the match stops... Lachlan's not doesn't and doesn't have the best endurance. Um, and you know, he's not known for his endurance. And obviously that's like a thing um where you, they, they, everyone knows that you can die that you're you're there forever. Um, you know, so it's you know, Ryan even kind of self-admittedly saying, Hey, if if Todd can stop the match, that's when it's gonna be real interesting. Uh and if you can't, then you know, is, are we gonna have like a, a Zolo off situation? Um now with that match, did you try uh, and uh, cuz i heard two different things and i don't want i don't i want to hear from your mouth within that zolo f match you hear everyone saying oh if todd would have got to the strap he would have won that match were you trying to get to the strap or were you like what's your the real story i thought i could even up to the end i thought i could beat that hand of his mm-hmm. I, that hand just didn't i was just uh i think that was the first time i pulled the waf match in a long time and it's mm. weird you know you're loaded you're loaded you're loaded you're loaded then gold comes out of nowhere um and I, I i thought i could beat that hand uh yeah if i was gonna pull them differently i would just lean all the way into the center put my hand as high as i could and i'd go just let my hand go just make sure i kept my wrist as my wrist as high as it could and wedge that elbow in he could have all those fingers and that would stop that match. Mm-hmm. Um, in the strap. I though. don't, and he's not tall enough to grab that hand and pull it down. Like if I did that with a tall person, Devin Lorette or mask mask or something like that, that just ripped me down. I mean, I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to stop that even against someone of Marcio's height, but Zol Zoloff isn't that tall. Right. Um, I was able to wedge it in there once. Yeah, I think my arm is way stronger than his. I just, I'm well, just yeah. In the third, so uh, whatever round it was, he he went into the hook and you beat him, and that's what everyone wanted to see. Everyone was screaming out, "Hook, hook, hook!" So, well, yeah, it was. Uh, I wish I would have done it different. Yeah. <laughs> Do um uh what i was oh, man i was gonna ask you something oh, oh, oh speaking of them, so when you're when you're set up, are are you? Do you prefer the the load? Uh, it, it, like, are you loading pressure? Like, it, 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 I prefer the WAL setup. Okay. Thumbs, fingers go. Right. Do you, what yeah, are you I guys? Don't like, I don't like that constant loading and loading and loading. So I'm usually the smaller hand, shorter person in that match. And the longer that grip setup goes on, the more I'm giving up. Right. You know, I'm already straight. You know, the tall guy has to come down, but the longer that goes, and you know, all of a sudden, you know, they're gaining more ground. I'm, you know, I start with about everything I need, you know, and the longer that grip, that's that grip goes, you know, I'm, I'm giving up territory, not gaining. Any, so, and what type of um, rule set are, are you guys doing this weekend? WL rules on a WAF table. 
Okay. Nice. Okay. So I, I, to me, that that actually, because I think you've talked about before, the WAL table hurts you because of these big guys can pull all the way back, but you can't come all the way forward. Yeah. Yeah. They added the they added to the pad at the wrong edge for me. For you, right? <laughs> yeah. And the if we could spin that pad around, it would be a lot better for me. Because <laughs> then you can keep coming just forward. Just bigger all the way around. Yeah. Yeah. Not just two in the back, two in the sides, two in the front. Yeah, because I I find it yeah I find it uh, uh, it's different um, you know and when they talked about Michael and Devin in their first King of the Table uh, in Dubai and they said that the pad didn't affect you know Rhonda Rebecca was saying that the pad didn't affect anything I I just I just disagree I feel like when someone like Michael Todd and his style was able to do that drag a little bit further back that, that That's the risk. It, yeah, yeah. I, I think so yeah but Devin. Devin shut that hand down on Michael Todd, man. The way yeah. Devin pulled Michael Todd was impressive, man. That yeah. was so sexy. I don't think Devin had to gain, you know, 60 pounds to do that. <laughs> I mean, I don't, being 300 pounds, your hand did not get that much bigger. But boy, Devin's hand looked crazy strong against Michael Todd. Yeah. What which you, surprised me because John's hand looked strong against Devin. What do you think and, about but, um, the six months from now, the match with, uh, Devin and uh, LeVon. I think Devin's the underdog in that. Um, usually you fault De LeVon for not being technical and, De you know, and you, you make it sound like Devin's like some Philadelphia lawyer or something. But I think Levin's got a perfect super match record. Yeah. You know, you don't go like 36 and zero without knowing something besides strong. Yeah. You know? And I think that's a, a, just to echo your point. I think people underestimate Levon's intelligence, and also equally underestimate Devin's power. Uh, in, in my opinion, Le Levon's been pulling some bad, bad dudes for a long time. Yeah, and uh, you know, we here in this country, you know, in this hemisphere, we don't we don't pull that caliber. You know, Le Levon's going against legit world rank people and like i said i mean i don't know if he's lost a match in the super match in four or five minutes. yeah <laughs> so, 2017 so. versus saban i think was his last loss yeah and i don't know if that was a tournament or a I super think match that was tournament yeah okay it might be yeah I, i'm not too sure well, either saban gripped up with devin at uh the hotel in dubai you know with saban being the last guy to beat Le Levin Lebon. Um, and uh, Saban was super impressed with Devin's arm strength. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they, they were like sitting on the couch. Sitting on the couch. Right? Yeah, the I kind of saw that. Yeah, yeah. Um, do, do you think, to touch on, um, do you think, what do you, if you had to sum it up, what are Americans doing wrong? You I know? don't know if we're doing everything wrong. We get, we get this America can't compete in Europe stuff, but what you're, you, you know, but normally what you're doing is you're taking our best, which are all north of 40, from a country, right? And you're comparing them to the rest of the planet. Right. True that, know? right, right. Because you know, it's not like one not place. Right. They go, you can't beat Europeans. Well, by Europeans, they mean Russians, Bulgarians, Ukrainians, yeah. Polish, you know, Latvians. It's like, <laughs> this happened to us once before. They were uh, not, when I was in South Carolina, they, the some of the Northeastern people wanted to put together a team versus team um match you know mm -hmm. because they were thinking south carolina was bragging too much but hell they were pulling pull, had marcio on the team who was like from brazil for fuck's sake yeah <laughs> and they had all of new york all of pennsylvania <laughs> like all of maryland on their team and we had one county in south carolina <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Well, and, and there's something, I guess, okay, well, let me rephrase it. Then. What is like uh, for me? I, and how, do you, have you ever, have you got in depth or talked to the, the, like, cause to me right now, like the lobby or to me, when I think of what the heck, I think of Georgia, um, Kazakhstan, and I think of, um, Bulgaria. Uh, and you know, I know Brandon would know a, a bit about Bulgaria, but they were always famous in ranking the powerlifting world, the Bulgarians, right? Yeah. I mean, but Americans dominate in powerlifting now and in strongman. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then uh, do you, are you familiar with anything that they're doing differently? Like raw the, powerlifting, raw, excuse me. Okay. Okay. Uh, but in, in the arm wrestling world, are you familiar with any of the, like the Bulgarians per inch? Again, cause you do have a match with a Bulgarian guy coming up after Lachlan. Yeah. Um, would they may be doing different? Um, I know I'm, I'm, I read a lot about like the Bulgarian method in powerlifting from decades ago. Um, 
as far as arm wrestling, I don't know what they're doing, but they got a lot more arm wrestlers to pull from, mm. you know, just because, I mean, if you're really going to say who's better arm wrestling, Americans or Europeans, well, then let's get rid of the NBA, the NFL, and the NBA. Exactly. Let's get those guys into arm wrestling. I've been saying that for a year. Same thing with powerlifting. If those guys were getting those kind of checks to do powerlifting or arm wrestling, um, all of us would be completely irrelevant. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly. That's why when uh, there used to be a big push to put the uh, arm wrestling in the Olympics when I was first starting out. And I was going, that's the stupidest thing I heard. Why? We could just, I go, if they put our wrestling in the Olympics, none of you guys are going. <laughs> right. No. With, All with, these college baseball pitchers are going to the Olympics. Yeah, that's true, right? Wrestling. Yeah, that is that's definitely true. Do you think? And I know you. You. Um. I, I think you. I think I know your answer. But do you think you're genetically gifted for arm wrestling? I think I got terrible genetics for arm wrestling. I'm the height of a 185 pound arm wrestler. My, you know, I got small hands and I'm small in stature. Mm -hmm. But what about, I mean, like that, the, the, your strength, I mean, cause everyone, I mean, cause looking at you again, you, the, you, you don't look as big as, you know, like, like Lachlan Adair is, um, you know, if, if I, if you didn't know, like you're just coming into the sport and you saw two guys and they saw you and they saw Lachlan Adair or you and a, even a Corey West, you know, or these guys and, and you know, the, the, the non, the average public would be like, well, that guy's really big and muscular and that guy's like, yeah, but know, Todd has a BD as well. Big dick energy. Oh, he does. You do have big dick energy. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Only one way to confirm. He's wearing flannel underwear. That's why <laughs> he has flannel. He tons in flannel underwear. We can't see him. That's why from the waist down, he's all flannel socks and undies. But, um, you know, but what, you know what I'm saying? Like, but you're, you're powering your strength and, and do you, do, do you think it's something else or just do you attribute it only to your training? I think I work harder than other people do. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I got into it, I kept hearing about all these arm wrestlers that were overtraining and needed rest and rehab. And I'm going, you guys ain't overtraining. You're training like three days a week, man. High school football team's doing two a days, and you're 30 years old training three days a week. You ain't overtraining. You know? <laughs> so, I love it. You know, I go, well, screw it. I'm training 14 times a week. That's what I'm doing. Now and then when I found a legit program, you know, I mean, I'm a big advocate of West Side, but I'll be honest, it was the only method I ever tried, but it worked for me at the beginning. But I love the where you write down how strong you are. And if you do not get stronger in, in six weeks, you change something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, right. And I, I think either, Brandon would be because you get stronger, you add volume. If you don't get stronger, you change a bunch of exercises and then start adding volume again. I love the simplicity of it, you know. Right. Because I was going to say, because Brandon does a lot of powerlifting coaching for people, and um, I would imagine your approach is similar. Um, well, different than Westside. No, I'm saying as far as writing things down, making your oh, clients yeah, getting course. stronger. Charting, um, making sure there's progression, things like that. You know, if you're not making progress, then uh, you're doing something wrong. Yeah. So, uh, you know, try to develop the right program. But again, the program's only so much. Uh, the intensity that the person trains with is more paramount than anything else. Mm -hmm. You know, the perfect program in the world if you're not going hard at it, the, you can do three by 10 to get stronger. If you're going as hard as you can on three by 10, you know what I mean? Do Todd, now do you, um, for all the people who like, who might like me, I look up to you as far as, um, uh, just cause you are two inches taller than I am. I have to look up to you. Uh, but do you, uh, do you, and I'm funny. And I know you, you like my self deprecating sense of humor. Cause I know you and Brandon and I, we all have that as well. We probably make fun of our, ourselves more than anybody else. Um, other than the Buffaloes. But uh, do you do you have a point where you um, I know you say uh, a, a quote I, I've tagged you in it and you hearted it so I know it's yours where you say um, <clears throat> uh, sore soreness doesn't equal weakness weakness equals weakness but do you have a point where you uh, you're training have you ever done where you're training you're like you know what ooh I'm a bit too sore to train today or like how do you deal with how do you deal with injuries from overtraining or a match or not not overtraining but you know what I'm saying? I do think it, you can overtrain myself, mm -hmm. right? I just don't think most arm wrestlers do, you know? And a lot of times they don't. They just, there's just so many myths that people have bought into where you have to have two or three weeks off before a competition, where you got to rehab, you got, you take ginger or turmeric or all this stuff for inflammation. I mean, for crying out loud, man, it's like every time I turn around, 
they're trying to massage me or feed me something that tastes like shit. You know? <laughs> what they never advocate is, hey, let's lift heavier weights. Let's lift them more. <laughs> you know? But I'm saying, and, what do you do when you have, uh, if you, you know, have you, I mean, or just like where you're out of practice or like, because for me, and I'm asking this question, like, I'm sure other people want to know, but I'm asking this question personally. Like right now, I feel like just my right elbow. I told you, I think uh, like right here in my, uh, like my, um, uh, like kind of tennis elbow, which I never had in my life. Um, it's been, it's just kind of hasn't gone away in about you three You got to do your JM presses. But there's been, there's been enough times, I'll bet you there's been 30 or 40 times in my life where I've gone into the gym, either with a hangover or with something sore. Uh -huh. Just, I mean, like really, really uh -huh. sore. And by the time I warmed up, thinking I was going to go down there, it's max effort day. And I go, well, screw it. I'm just going to get the max I can do today and still set a PR. Mm -hmm. By the time I got through the warm up and everything else, a lot of that ache and pain and that coughing and that sniffling and stuff is your body. It, you're probably not changing your routines enough. So your, your body's fighting that. So instead of uh, accommodating it and overcoming it, it's trying to protect itself by getting you not to do that. Mm -hmm. So drink some more coffee, bite your tongue. Warm up and go lift some heavy weight. <laughs> <laughs> I think that again, I, I think I can do that. I'll send you my medical bill if it doesn't work, though. You know, <laughs> um, but you, you, most people don't get hurt in the gym. I, I, I haven't, I mean, I've hurt my back in the gym by before I understood what I was doing. Yeah, but I mean, people say that if they train like me, they would tear their elbows out or destroy their shoulders or something. I got some of the healthiest elbows and shoulders in this sport. Yeah, and, uh, I can, I can, a, uh, and I do very little table time. I, you're, the, all this table time is what's hurting all these people. It's not the gym. Yeah, I can 100% attest um, I when I started doing, um, um, cause I started back into, uh, m I got back into arm wrestling right as you and Ryan Bowen were kind of doing your, uh, you know, things together. And so I was like, hey, you know, this is, again, when I started, and you know this, I started training in the early 2000s. There was no internet. There was no like YouTube where I can go how to top roll. You had to go to a competition and learn, get with someone who said, this is what you do. Now people are coming into the sport going, the first time on the table, they're already kind of setting up right and doing, you know, where it was trial and error completely for me. You really don't need amateur classes anymore, do we? Right, I know, I feel that. Um, I think you need one match to get it out of, the, out of, you know, out of your system I'm gonna film what ready for those feel like, and then you you start pulling with people. But um, so for me, I was. Oh, uh, that's a clever idea. Instead of having amateur classes, let the beginners have three losses in a double elimination tournament. There you go. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's not bad. Um, but you know, I started watching you and Ryan, and I was like, oh, this is how people start arm wrestling. And my wife and we were just like side pressure everything, and you know, that's still kind of the basis of her style is uh you know and uh and i will say that you know people are always like dude how are your elbows and i'm like because i train my elbows like and um but i i can definitely attest to the fact that if you're doing things smart uh, in, in in systematically incremental increments you know in strength in these areas that these weird motions you your body adjusts to them and you, you get stronger for sure well yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it's uh, we're running out of time. On this okay, one. I was gonna say, yeah, we we wanted to keep it right about 30 35 minutes. Todd, it was so good having you on. Do you have um, um, you're able to watch the match on Ryan Bowen's channel? Is that right? Uh, this Saturday, uh, yeah, I, I, I've seen Ryan's got uh, the link out, yeah. Um, he's hitting everybody's Facebook page, so you'll probably get eight notifications for it if you are members of the number of the groups i am so. <laughs> right yeah same same as me us too but um no we just wanted to say thank you for having um you know thank you for coming on um brandon uh, normally talks more and uh but he's in flannel and i'm sick <laughs> so i wanted and you know and and like i said you and i have chatted before again thank you for always being a a good man to uh uh to me and helping me in my training um and um uh do you, you want to plug any of your stuff your your instagrams or anything your your uh, youtube page I'm good. You'll find my channel when you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, you you have like five thousand followers plus now or something like that. So I got fifty two hundred followers and almost hey. two hundred videos, and it's uh, and I got some dedicated people, man. I got like like fifty people who comment on every movie now. So <laughs> and you got the cat. And, so uh, I, I well, watched the videos. I mean, that was sometime later. We'll talk about this online coaching stuff because. There's between amateurs and online coaching, it's kind of a 
me and Artem talked about it a little bit, but there's a lot of elite arm wrestlers out there who offer a lot of advice, but not too many of the elites, including myself, have produced another elite arm wrestler. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Well, when Mike- so I would really like to dive. So my shit's all free because I'm not so sure any of it works. So I'm not charging <laughs> anybody. Right out. What were you going to say? Well, I was going to say, just to contest what he was saying, like, uh, if you're, you know, like a six in terms of like how good you are from one to 10, mm. but there's no seven, eight or nines doing programming, then six is cream of the crop. Yeah. So um, that's why there's like more intermediate level guys doing programming. Gotcha. Same thing in powerlifting. Yeah. yeah. Well, Todd's a free six. If anyone wants to jump on his uh, YouTube <laughs> and you want to get a, at least a six and a half, you know, you can get a free if you head over to uh, uh, Todd's YouTube page. We'll, we'll, we'll plug it for you. All right. Todd, thank you so much for having us. I'm going to be watching. Uh, I can't wait. I'm going to be in my underpants uh, uh, watching my Toddzilla underwear watching you. And uh, like I said, I, I, I'm I just looking forward to a good match between you and Lachlan. And uh, I think a lot of people have no idea what's going to happen. I'm one of those people. Um, you know, I, I, I'm a big fan of both you guys. So uh, I can't wait to see you do there. And uh, if I don't talk to you before, then um, safe travels to Turkey. And uh, um, I can't wait to see what you do over there with the Bulgarians. Thank Thanks, you for coming guys. on. Thank you, Todd. I just wanted to, can I give a quick plug to um, uh, the uh, guys at the uh, the Compound Arm Wrestling? Um, they're having a big practice on uh, January 9th. It's in San Pedro, my buddy's gym. Oh, yeah. So you know about it then? Oh, yeah. You're not going there, right? Well, we're going to Supercross in Anaheim on oh, Saturday. Okay. And then uh, maybe we'll pop in. Most likely we won't, though, being honest. Um, yeah. We're going to have practice here in my house on Friday at 4. Yeah, I got that. Yeah. And uh, so that's in Vegas. Uh, is everyone invited? The whole world, all of Las Vegas yeah, is invited. Of course. Right? And um, are you going to be well? <laughs> if you want to get some free Omnicron. <laughs> um, come not out. either way. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Uh, and uh, but yeah, like I said, I wanted to give a shout out to uh, the guys at the compound. They're super cool when they're doing a big practice. Uh, it's going to be at noon at uh, South Bay Strength. That's right. That's what it is. Yep. OK, so that's Brandon's friends. Brandon's got friends everywhere. And um, uh, and it's going to be January 29th at noon. And uh, check out the compound. The owner looks like a bodybuilding version of me. So like, like Bone a- Muscle is his Instagram, Steve. He like when, sometimes when I see pictures of him, I'm like, oh shit, I don't remember being that lean. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to say, so he's like, he's leaner and more muscular. Oh yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. but yeah, but you are in flannel and and, That's true. and a perfect picture of health. So. That's true. But that was cool. I, I, that was nice for Todd. To come yeah, out. it was. I uh, I don't want to be rushy, but I am achy like a mother. Let's go. Let's go. Well, if you want to send uh, donations to uh, get Brandon some uh, more Advil, you know where to find us. And um, uh, like I said, we uh, we're try we were trying to get Lachlan Adair on before, but with Brandon's health uh, and testosterone <laughs> levels, we don't know. We're we're not we're not we're not promising anything. If you guys want to sponsor this podcast, reach out to us at yourmorningbj at gmail dot com, and uh, you know plug, we'll plug you in the show, and uh, you'll help support what we do. Um, as little as it is, uh, it would help us greatly. We will. We love you. And, um, we're just trying to get Brandon well. So yeah, this is the part we normally make out. Um, but I'm not going to just cause I don't want to get, we're going to do it with our penises now. Yeah. Well, that's easy. Yeah. yeah. Plug it. <laughs> Thanks for joining us till next time. Yeah. Yeah.